nothing is quite what it seems in the Yemen, not even these golden guineas from Saudi Arabia that have kept the war going for so long. Some of these handsome British coins turn out to be forgeries, base imitations from Beirut. But the real stuff has done damage enough. Everyone wants a bit of the 10 million pounds or so that reach the Yemen every year. After five years of war, old tribal loyalties are for sale. Gold has created chaos. We had our own evidence of this as we drove south through the desert, where the sands of Saudi Arabia's empty quarter drift over Yemen's mountains. The route lay through Dachum country, where the tribesmen exact tribute from the royalists in return for a safe passage. To help us through, our drivers were Dachum men, but they decided to show their strength by delaying us. It took two days to cover the 150 miles of desert track to Surwa, literally the end of the road. The next day, the Dachum decided to apologize in traditional style. I had to borrow an automatic rifle to use in a complicated ceremony. What does he say? Well, he says that this goat has been killed in order to compense what yesterday... The Dachum contribution, a goat, slaughtered on the spot. ...to kill goat or sheep to be offered to the people who has been hurted. And we hope that you uh, accept uh, our uh, apologies and uh, to forgive us Please, please tell them that I accept their apologies and apologize for anything we may have done. Half-cooked goat is scarcely an appetizing dish, though luxury indeed to the hardy Yemenis. But it had to be eaten. If we'd have refused, our ghosts would have regarded their apology as rejected and our return journey would have been in some jeopardy. Gallantly, we gulped it down in quantities which satisfied our hosts and left our digestions little the worse. <laughs> Roads are a rarity in the Yemen. For the most part, there's the open desert and the camel trails that wind endlessly through the mountains. It's hard enough to get the royalist supplies through. Camera equipment is even more of a problem. Bulky, heavy, and at the same time, perilously fragile. Almost everything was damaged in some way during our trek. <laughs> our destination was Gurwa, only nine hours' march away. But to reach it safely, we had to take a roundabout route. Two and a half days of plodding behind our camel train through dry river wadis and over mountains. Tribesmen of the Beni Hushesh were holding out for more money from the royalists before they would allow men and supplies to use the easier road through their territory. To Yemenis, all Europeans, and they've seen few enough, are mercenaries, British, French, Belgian, and worth a considerable ransom. The royalist princes were anxious that we should not be captured. It's said that when the Egyptians first arrived in Yemen, they expected desert country which they'd have no trouble in occupying. We learned the hard way, as they did, just how difficult the terrain is to cover. From the desert to the high plateau surrounding Sana, the enemy-occupied capital, was a laborious climb of 7,000 feet. At Gurwa, a typical royalist camp of caves and tents hugging the hillside to avoid the Egyptian bombs, we met the man we'd come to see. Prince Abdullah bin Hassan. Abdullah is a fighter, but now his energies are more consumed in bargaining with dissident tribes than in harassing the Egyptians. He insisted that if the withdrawal of Egyptian forces meant that other Arab troops would take their place, he would never accept a ceasefire. The Yemenis had fought too long for their freedom, he said, to be deprived of it at the last. And he denied that divisions within the ranks of the royalists would produce chaos when the Egyptians finally left. Civil war in the Yemen seems closer than Prince Abdullah would admit. A simple withdrawal of the Egyptian forces might be enough in some parts of the world to bring peace and prosperity. Here it's different. A feudal kingdom where only recently slavery flourished, 
the Yemen has had a brutal introduction to the modern game of world politics. When the war of liberation is over, it will be impossible to restore the old ways. Just as hard to create a stable new society from the warring factions in this extraordinary country.